Hi, my name is Eric Ryden, certified sommelier and owner of Le Grand Triage on the Upper East Side. Today, we're going to be talking about a sparkling wine from Italy, but that is not Prosecco. I feel like Prosecco steals all of the attention, all of the love, and this is a budding category that we're big fans of. It goes by a couple names, um, Pet Nat or Petion Naturel, maybe you've heard of before. Uh, Colfundo is another name it sometimes goes by, usually just in Italy, uh, but the name uh, ascribed to this particular wine is frizzante. And if you translate frizzante directly from Italian, it translates to frizzy red hair, which of course, in the old dialect of Emilia Romagna, where this wine is coming from, then translates to something, experts have, have kind of put it close to something like slightly sparkling. So the difference between this wine and Prosecco is that Prosecco goes through two fermentation processes. If you've watched some of our videos before, maybe you know that fermentation is the process of converting natural grape sugars into alcohol. So every wine must go through that process. Well, Prosecco goes through two. How many? Two. If you need to remember, it's two. Uh, easy way to remember is twice the bun, twice the fermentation. Boom, boom, that's Prosecco. This, one fermentation process. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that those two fermentation processes, how many? Two, boom, two. Those two fermentation processes for Prosecco, the first is for alcohol production, the second is for carbon dioxide production. So that's where we get all the CO2, all the bubbles. So if this is frizzante and has just a little bit of bubbles, if it only goes through one fermentation process, how is that possible? Well, the answer might surprise and amaze you. I mentioned before that this actually is a beer cap enclosure and they also recommend that you actually Give this a little bit of a shake to uh, mix all the sediment that's in there with everything evenly. Uh, so you'll notice we're actually going to open this like it was a beer, not actually like a wine. Ooh, that sounds beautiful. All right, so so for this wine, um, how on earth does it have bubbles? You can see all of that CO2 when I'm pouring it. How does this have bubbles if it only goes through one fermentation process? Well. It's actually bottled before it finishes its first fermentation process. And what a lot of people don't realize is that primary fermentation or alcoholic fermentation, as we call that first fermentation process, um, it actually has a byproduct of small amounts of CO2. However, most wines, your regular Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, or Cabernet, um, that extra CO2 is actually removed before they bottle it. So here, because they're actually closing the wine up, with that beer cap before fermentation is finished, that's why we end up with naturally occurring CO2, right? So this amount of CO2 would occur in any Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, et cetera, et cetera, if we didn't degas them before bottling. However, this is actually bottled before fermentation has finished. So you can actually maybe still see a little bit of the bubbles still coming up. From the bottom there. So why is this cloudy? Why does this, you know, totally, I mean, just not translucent at all. So uh, the catalyst for fermentation is yeast, right? We've talked about that in our unfiltered wine classes. Uh, so unfiltered, we actually have the yeast that is responsible for, for fermentation still in the bottle. The difference between this and a regular unfiltered wine, again, is that we're actually bottling this before fermentation has been concluded. That's why not only do we have the cloudy color, but we also have zibbles. But let's go ahead and try it. Let's see what it's, uh... woo, it smells ripe. Love it. It's like um, room temperature, pineapple, like dull pineapple juice, um, white cranberry, really sour, almost like kombucha or like a, a sour beer. Oh, it's so tasty, really tart and acidic. Um, I think this would actually go really well with a lot of soft cheeses, uh, charcuterie plates, things like that, um, maybe even risotto, but we are big fans. Uh, let us know what you think, comment, message, carry your pigeon, whatever is working these days during the apocalypse. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys Wednesday for another wine that I, I don't know what it is right now, but uh, we'll see you then. Stay safe and stay home.